All right, the time to take the Hydrazil in a specific place. There is one the... thing I do want to touch base on if uh, now is a good... Don't worry, this is just... Uh, uh, Deus integrated with Zohar and Awoke. Yes. But we found out Deus in the center of a giant structure created out by the fallen Merkava. The only way we can think of destroy Deus is to penetrate into there and make our way to, uh, to the center. So let's get a drill. That structure used to be Merkava itself, but we must assume the inside has changed significantly. But we don't know what dangers await inside of it. Please be very careful. Basically, final dungeon, get prepared, dipshit. Yeah, thanks, Igor. Let me take care of it. I will destroy Deus, even if it costs me everything I have. And then we'll go out for coffee afterwards. Hey, are you sure about this? Bart? I know you must be thinking now, if you destroy Deus, the proliferation of the nanomachines that are out to turn this planet itself into a weapon will stop. But if you end up losing Ellie, who is united with Deus for that very purpose, then what good will it be? But... That's right, Faye. He's our friend who's been through a lot with us, too. Yeah, but you won't have a world to save if, you know, Miang has her way. I think that saving a dear friend is just as important as protecting our planet or saving the world. Uh, That's the uh... same thing, Sigurd. One better reason is where to fight. If you can't even save your friends, then how could you save the world? Uh... That's a nice spot, Sigurd, but I think you should... Hey, uh, Sigurd... You... Don't um, you agree? Sigurd, Aerith may beg to disagree, just saying. Yeah, Sig's Why? right. Don't you ever give up, Faye. You're the only one who can release Ellie from Deus' spell. But we'll give you as much backup as we can. So... Thanks a lot, Bart, Sigurd. I won't give up! <laughs> Volunteer to fight for your master and the rest of us. So it's our turn to fight for you and Ellie. Let's go, Faye, to gain true freedom! Hooray! <laughs> Oh, well, they won't take our freedom. Have we launched the Yggdrasil? Go ahead, Jola, what you were wanting to ask. Regarding Graf's death, I wonder, so that was all Graf's doing, right? Like, did did Faye's father have any input on that sacrifice? Because if not, it's kind of a shame that Faye never got to properly say bye to his dad. No, no, it was. Uh, again, it was a case of both... It was the body of his father, so had the, not in a sense by the last cycle his personality re-emerged, but as he himself said, the Graf never had a complete control and part of his essence just died anyway, naturally and so on. What essentially was at the very end was just a ghost, and in the last couple of moments he just disappeared once the Zohar started targeting Faye. Hmm. I guess I so do... In a way, yes, it was, it was goodbye with uh, with his father. Okay, to give credit, I do feel like Faye's father's death scene was done better than a lot of the other parent deaths we've gotten, because it was done as a noble it's, thing, which does also, help us out. It's also something that's been foreshadowed for a very, for the big, not foreshadowed, but, you know, built up from the beginning of the game, you know, with, uh, with Graf being a constant presence. But uh, remember that lighthouse that we saw, we saw a couple of times while passing through with... Um, with the existence of ship, let's take a look at it, uh, why not? Oh boy, over here you'll see Robert Patterson and Willem Dafoe arguing over booze. <laughs> the Thames captain said the base of his lighthouse is thousands of years old. It's sturdy, so they put a light on top to make it a lighthouse, but nobody knows what's inside. Weird well, since somebody let's must take a look. This. Have a look. Maybe it's haunted. It's another elevator. Uh, do we have elevator music? Thank you. And we arrive in the remains of the Zebo civilization, what appears to be very familiar looking city by the looks of it. The city we saw from Emeralda's ruins. It's down here. We've come a long way from there. And there's no real music, just a droning sound. There are some monsters running around, but as you can see, Zeboim, in terms of aesthetic, is supposed to represent our society, the, the society of the modern day. So that begs the question, 
what happened exactly, you know, what has, uh, you know, pulled the crypto for laps. Because as we saw, there were remnants of from all over the place, like, say, the, the missile base uh, from which, uh, you know, Ellie and, uh, and Emeralda used the mass driver and then Bart took the missiles to use in the final operation. You know, okay. even even the gears, as mentioned, remember from the beginning that we're mentioning that the gears were excavated and then reused? The gears were created in this in the Zebway era, the, the robots. So it seems like a bit of an overkill, sorry. Well, it kinda is, uh, honestly. They're but, evil I lizard it, people! They must be stuck! Tree frog, uh, frogs. Croaker tribes, as they're called. But mind well, you, I guess they croaked, huh? <laughs> it's best if you stay on on top of your gears until you have to enter the actual buildings. Uh, trust me. Well, let me guess. It gets very dangerous if you exit the gears. There, there, are, there are some you know gear-sized enemies pro prowling around too, so you better stay you know on your on your guard. But yeah, again, again, this is technically a side content that you can do completely on your own. But it's so strongly recommended that you do that before, at least before entering the the final dungeon. Not necessarily for gameplay purposes, although there are good rewards, uh, you know, for you to do this kind of thing. But on a story standpoint, because it actually provides some, you know, in interest in the Zeboi Mera. Again. Much like with other parts of the history of the world, the Zevo Emera was supposed to get the, its own game. But interestingly enough, back in the day when the Giz game was made, there were rumors that Square was planning to make an OVA. Talking mm. about the, the Zevo Emera. And I couldn't believe that, considering this was around the time where Square was Square somewhat actually expanding its um its media into actually starting to make TV series and movies. We had stuff like, say, Final Fantasy Unlimited and The Legend of the Crystals, you know, um, or stuff like that. So something kind of similar to that, an OVA that was a spin-off to an actual existing game, was not too uncommon. But it wasn't really a thing that happened, ultimately. It wasn't even a... It was just a, just a baseless rumor. Um, but uh, the activity that we were doing in this case was supposed to be much bigger and actually mandatory for the story. Um, in this case, the ruins of a supermarket. But uh, but unfortunately, we're just relegating to the side bit at the end with um, you know with you just exploring these ruins and obtaining information. Yeah, but yeah, as you can. Right. Sorry. I was just saying, Shane. Yeah. Shane sparkle sparkle. And if you look to your right, you'll see a Mimikyu in that supermarket. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's a, for some reason, a picture of Ash and Pikachu. I don't know why. And it's clawed up. I don't know. I don't let's really want to know what happened. Let's go to the movie theater. See what's playing there. Oh, Spider Man! Some way home! Oh, yeah, Marada, is Face Talk him? Well, that's what we'll need to know in this part. Yes. Okay. I was about to ask. <laughs> Yeah, what we about never. Kim? What about Kim? Is he still Faye? We never really did figure out about the Faye Kim. Kim thing, did we? That's what this party is for. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, that that gives me a good time to actually elaborate more on what I said uh, at the end of two parts ago. Um, again, the the entire crux of this is that is how such how sad this entire how tragic this entire story is about how all the humanoid life here is, are just essentially you know meat puppets created by a rogue ai with just one exception that was essentially imbued with the power of a ultra cosmic entity that sure it could pass for a deity for our point of view but uh, but it's you know it was just a pre in a prisoner but stayed captive for thousands of years inside the, you know the zoar as well um and yet at the same time this is a story about regaining freedom from those bonds again on paper it's not too different from your typical rpg story about you know um you know the pop, the typical party that normally starts with a war between factions and then discover there's like a, a super powered uh, evil behind things uh, and oh it's a broadcasting station um and um and ultimately defeat that to save the world but this is taken to just like such new heights uh, you know in, like that uh, it's actually quite uh, the achievement but again i want to save that uh, 
properly for the final thoughts. So we'll actually come back here later because there's something that I forgot to actually check here now. But if you check in here, you will actually start, you actually learn a bit more how exactly the Zebuin civilization fell, believe it or not. Let me guess, um, Meyung was involved. Well, the question is how and why, especially. Like, remember, the entire point of Deus is for humans to multiply while maintaining good genes in order to select the candidates that will be, you know, reincarnated as angels so they can actually fuel him to, you know, to, you know, actually, to actually return to an operational state. You know, Teo, this, all this talk of this being a post, you know, a, a way in the future from our time and all this talk of reapers and angels is starting to wonder considering it's just, it's square maybe this is uh, job maybe this is the long a long distance sequel to the world's review franchise after everybody dies who knows <laughs> Like I also like I also Java noticed for a long couple of, couple of parts ago in uh, in terms of you know a lot of elements uh, you can kind of tell also that the first year at least was also very inspired by this but I can tell you also the first Drakengard to one extent uh, um, although that one that particular game talks about as some terms of fucked upery that are kind of different from this one yeah for example you can have a fucking dragon roaming around in these cities and you better not try to fight uh, fight that thing while on foot <laughs> What on earth is a dragon of all things doing down here? No idea. Let's just get inside. It's a JRPG, just probably. with it. <laughs> Alright, so let's... Oh, who put this music? It's Joe! What the Joe. hell are you doing here? Are you like an automaton or something and this is your home where you Even were created? Even better, I will explain these backstory at the very end of the part. Uh, it's finite time to actually know it. Uh... He just blew into town. Oh, he's a zombie. How do you like my shop? Pretty good, huh? No. It's Joe's shop, so of course it on Joe's brand. We love my chin. Oh, and guess what? Trader Joe's. He sells drive. <laughs> I, how beautiful. Of Joe course. becomes a fucking pusher at the end of the game. Yeah, he sells drive that we can't buy because it's too expensive. It's so it's expensive. Jesus as Christ. Hope he doesn't get high on his own supply. I can also tell you this. Uh, Who's this, paying for this? Well, uh, the part is paying it. Um, but. Uh, but here's the thing, he also sells very good parts for your gears, so this is essentially... Joe becomes the best gear shop in the game at the very end of it, ironically enough. Um, it also has some, like for example, the Omega 100 engine is actually a very high risk, high reward situation because it reduces your fuel output and fuel maximum capacity to a very minimal but it boosts your actual attack by a lot, effectively turning you not necessarily into a glass cannon, but one that uh, exhausts uh, their fuel very easily, so they, you need to actually, you know, refuel properly. Thankfully, some accessory, if you can combine it with some accessory that boosts up how much fuel you regain with each capacity, you can create a pretty busted up gear. I didn't need to because that was essentially overkill and I didn't really need to in the end. Um, but again, you can tinker with pretty some interesting stuff. So, how do you like it? Come again sometime. We will see draw Big Joe one last time. But, uh, well, yes, I can, I can actually use this time to talk about him. I like how you part. also get some special music when you go into that room. Yeah, course. it's the triumphant one. Get this. He's actually originally from the Zebui Mera. I knew He's it. Originally his original name was, get this, uh, Joe Balboa, or more commonly, the Stone Joker. He was kind of... He was kind of like the Captain Quark of this of this period. He was essentially a famous boxer uh, and uh, basically a beloved rock star, hence why also the outfit, uh, and essentially a, um, a ladies killer, among other things. Um, he had a very interesting kind of life. Um, and was essentially the, the one of the most popular people in the entirety of Zebra. Unfortunately, he was uh, while this was around 30 years old, uh, um, because of stuff that was happening to Zebra civilization, we will learn later. He accidentally pulled the Futurama and accidentally locked himself into um, a freezing tank, a, a cryogenic tank that he was experimenting with, had asked some people to experiment it on, and nobody knew how to get him out of there, so we left him there. 4,000 years later, 
the Eve was accidentally excavated in Mapa, but unfortunately he washed up ashore and completely lost his memories. So ever since he roamed around the world, just fucking around. That sounds oddly strange yet awesome, and it's really sad that we didn't get that incorporated into the actual game. Sound. Watch, Again, watch as you can imagine, planet. this was supposed to be elaborated or at least shown more in the game properly. Sorry, what was that, Dad? So it's like, now, now, now I'm thinking of Ben from Treasure Planet. I don't know why. It looks like we can get our gear Just going there. So, what not? so <laughs> does this mean that Joe... So, Joe... It... Really? Joe, it's implied that Joe has some teleportation capabilities thanks as technology from Zevoim, as why it was able to pop up everywhere. Uh, and also the reason why it's so strong is because it was because an actual proper champion and uh, essentially uh, also from a time where people were more technological. So being potentially slightly augmented at that. I won't lie, it almost sounds like he could have been a potential candidate for playable party member. I don't know. Like again, I like the idea of potentially maybe a bonus boss yeah. and everything. Well, I think he would have been no like you know that. a bonus party member. Like, well, your reward for constantly running into him up until the end is that he joined you at the end. All right, and by following the the rails, we find this particular train station. What was oh, what is God. this? Are we about Aaron, to pull an amazing Spider-Man too? Huh? What what was that? What does that mean? Where are we? Here. The game's development room. Oh? A plaza. Which used to be... God, it's haunted! More illuminated. Illuminated more than anything. We go back to a flashback. During Christmas time. Uh, or at least the equivalent of what Zemo is celebrated for Christmas. Were they always underground or did their thing just come Congratulations, Ellie. Never a year has come and passed. <sighs> Looks so thrilled. Yes. Happy New Year, Kim. Is Kim president? No, more like a scientist. The steel seal fangs pride with a tuxedo is kind of surreal. I know, right? Oh, no, he's got the Chad drip. A, a phoenix tuxedo, no less. Beautiful. <laughs> With his uh, Apollo uh, fringe right there. Anyway, she <laughs> said to between very sound like an old person. Okay. Oh, well, this time last year, I never thought we would, that war would come this far. Yes. But we managed to get by without getting involved. Yeah, that would have sucked if we died that way. We'll be just fine. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not over yet. Why, at this very moment, people are still dying. Well, people are always dying, uh, Faye. Let's stop talking about this. Let's not dwell on the past year, not at the start of a new year. Let's really everyone, new year everyone with in the Faye. beginning of 2021. <laughs> Amen to that. Yes, well, today at least, I want to spend a day without worrying. Then why are you worrying? <laughs> because like the other incarnations, Kim is kind of a dork. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid idiots, bunch of fools. Press Jericho, when did you get any? <laughs> Kim, thought, you're too loud. Thought you were going to say Charlotte Copley. That's where we You just were. made the list. You called her a whore. <laughs> I don't care if they hear me. All the people here are also fools. You've had too much to drink, Kim. Oh boy. Kim, did you get into the special hash again? Think about it. What's the purpose of fighting each other on such a tiny planet as this? Hiding out of fear of being hunted into a corner. Are you saying we should into, take it outside? Rushing into fight as if there were only so many reserved seats to the right of life. 
Starting a war is stupid. Inciting it is also stupid. He actually Killing does kind of look like Killing people is an act of terrorism or is protest against war that kill people is just as stupid. You're all fools. This is scaringly topical right now. I know, right? Yeah. Kim, I felt sorry for that child. But I don't think people in Ravine destroyed the generator with that intention. They're saying some stuff that was happening on the sidelines. Again, war, that's what you needed to know. They don't have any other ways to express themselves. Then maybe they should work it out on the playground like children. The government is the one to blame. Man, this really is topical. Is that a good enough reason for that child to worst dead people? It wasn't much of an operation. It was difficult, but it was enough chance to win. We'd have won if we had better equipment. Hmm. Maybe that child would have been saved if there was electricity. It's not just that child. Five people died in my hospital. The ICU didn't function. Stupid. Just fools. Humans. Creatures are meant to live. No electricity. This place is lit up like a Christmas tree. Why do we want to die out? Why do we strangle themselves? Humans are defective creatures. A bunch of fools. Now, 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 Kim. That's why genetic damage is up lately. The birth rate is also going down. Kim, let's not do something drastic. <laughs> Only 30 years to live. Nature, this oh. plan, won't allow humans to live any longer than that. I mean, war doesn't exactly turn people on, Kim. Ellie's also about to give him another good point. Am I a fool too? Yeah, Kim, maybe you should actually look at the room. Mm -hmm. Like, look, yes, war sucks, but don't act like everyone just does it for fun. They're... Are reasons huh? people do fight. I had a physical at the hospital today. Oh boy. I'm pregnant. Uh, uh, uh let's, 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 let's <laughs> make, the, make the opposite of that. Oh. They said I can't have children because of a hereditary genetic damage disease thing. Ooh. Damage, yeah. So fuck you, you insensitive prick. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I was, excuse me for Again, being positive. Kim has some no, good no, points, uh, but it, but this Ellie Pussy was just a rambling too much. I can't oh. create life. I'm a creature waiting to become extinct. She says that as she as she looks at me. Stop looking at me, Ellie. Okay, I was. <laughs> I wonder what if we created a baby. Am I also a fool? Sure, why not? You're also a fool. Uh, well, I guess that was the end of that conversation. You know, I really like that no matter the iteration, Faye cannot read the room for the life of no. him. <laughs> and also, as you can see, also Kim was like, has like some painting skills. It's not good. It's not gonna work. Hmm. Do you have an idea that could Somehow we must break the spell or the humans on this planet will die out. No. I don't care about humans. Life itself will be ruined if we don't do something. Some pure life, not cursed. Oh boy. A pure life. Why do you people insist on playing God? It almost never ends well, even it's for God fun. himself. <laughs> this, this is the new spirit vessel that will break the curse. Huh. It hasn't awakened yet. The form was created by nanomachines, but uh, neural stimulation hasn't been done by the assembler tower yet. It's physically stable, but still doesn't function as a living creature yet. A nanomachine colony. Made to look like a little anime girl. Mm hmm. <laughs> Literally, with the power of God in anime. Well, the power of God is not really used here. No matter how many times we rewrite the hereditary codes, the impressions embedded in our bodies cannot be stopped. 
it was necessary to pursue this fervor, we had to recreate the molecular, uh, no, actually the atomic level by referring to the structural patterns of you and I. Though if she can't grow this up... This child holds our futures and possibilities. Aw, she's like their baby. Basically. But if she can't grow up though, is that really life? Can this child be the angel who can give us more time? It's ironic considering what... Uh, yeah, what when you say you... philosophical stuff like that, that often preempts something pretty bad. Well, as, as we know, the government did not allow that to happen, Sonic Adventure 2 style. Mm -hmm. Because they were finding, you know, heretical and stuff. I remember. Long ago, you, Kim, died. Wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> Again. Yeah. Right before Town died, it was because soldiers of Town tried to use me. Okay, for the sake of stuff, let's say she's using broken language because emotional moment instead of Richard screwing that one up. No, she's it's, always it's, used somewhat yeah, broken yeah. language. Em Emeralda being, you know, properly emotional colony that was just born the other day, she's just actually, you know, learning. That's right. The memory in my soul was left in me for your sake. While I being held, Crowley told that I... The ultimate work of art that technology gave birth to. The ultimate life form. Yeah. <laughs> she really is Shadow. Yes. I knew I was thing. Look, my body. Yes. What As about? we know in battle, she can actually morph into anything she wants. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Different from Maria, Maji, and Ellie. Human imitation, but different. Which also means that she's completely free from being taken over by Miang. Good. That's uh, that's actually a pretty good thing. I I couldn't see. In a way, to... Kim was accidentally actually going on the right path potentially. Kim and Ellie said, "I was Angel." So Faye really was. Kim. Yes, uh, you're the child. I, or Kim, wished for. Kim as being a part of me, in my blood, passing his memory down the generations for the past 4,000 years. So, so yeah, in a way, Faye is Kim, still. Existing for the day that the child, who Kim was never able to embrace for so long, would be born. And when you get down to it, Faye and Ellie really are Emerald's parents. Faye, thanks for being substitute Kim till now, but... It okay. Hmm. Thank you for acting as my dead father up until this point. Uh, you're welcome. Come on, Faye, now's the time to accept her as your true daughter. I'd be strong and wait and make Kim and Ellie proud. That I ate their child. Oh boy, Ellie's gonna love to hear this when she gets free of Myung. Who's paying for the child support, bro? Uh, you know, yeah, face me, me, had me, it rough. Hold oh, on. What? What? Yeah. Right there. Fate, body, so h hot. What's happening? What's happening? Are we getting an anime <laughs> transformation or something? Broken, broken language. <laughs> Fate, hold me tight. Don't let go. You said that right after your body is hot. Like... It's more like Emerald is experiencing uh, again that kind of emotion. And with that, oh uh, my God, puberty! Of an adult. Uh, what? Hey. Okay. Body. I. Uh, uh, uh. Look, Emerald, I'm not sure I can give you the talk right now. Probably should ask Sheeta for that. Yeah, well, wait till you're older. I oh, become really? adult. Adult. Yes, Chita, because you're an actual doctor. <laughs> uh, yeah, Chita, this is one time we can use your expertise. I'm not getting your way anymore. 
You never did. You were actually pretty helpful to us. As you when can the see, the adult Emeralda kind of looks a bit like Ellie. Okay, so... Emeralda. Okay, Emeralda. You might notice some changes on your body right now. Um, uh, Margie. Hey. Uh, there you go. Yeah. You take it. Margie. Well, actually, I kind of just fast forwarded past puberty. Yeah, Good I for you. Fair. Being on a machine colony, I don't think. Uh... Anyway, discussion on excavations leave generating a very special effect. I don't know, like, we can ignore so, this. This so essentially explains you the mechanical the upper driver. Go on, Drova. So I'm guessing that if you don't come to this city, she never gets her adult sprite? No. No, exactly. You you actually are encouraged to do this as well, aside from the story. Um, once she becomes an adult, Emeralda gets like a pick at 20% boost to, to all of her stats, so nice. yeah, go for it. Um, and also you can do some one another uh, side activity that I will showcase at the end. Now that said, but, on the level of anime squickiness, what level are we on here? Like, is she still like mind of a child just now and mind of adult, or is she properly Mature well, remember, in all senses. technically speaking, she's not even human to begin with. She's an animal machine colony that is learning how to be a human. So at that po in, in that kind of sense, if you want to say, yeah, she still has a mind of a child in that kind of sense. I mean, You she... know, all I'm getting from this is that Faye's hugs can age you up. <laughs> oh. Okay. Wait That's a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did her clothes grow with her, by the way? Because, you know, those were clothes. I think she's wearing different clothes, actually. They're, they're, they're similar to the ones that she had. We just grew up. Remember, being another machine con, she can more part of her body, and yes. that means also having clothes. So. But that's the thing, though. But that's the thing, though. The clothes were given to her by Krellian. people when they... Yeah, yeah, by Krellian. So, technically, wouldn't that mean that the clothes she was wearing wouldn't grow with her, which... Okay, you can easily say that being technological, I think Krellian anticipated something like this and gave her fantastic four ask uh you know clothes <laughs> that can resist to stop like scratching it honestly like it's, it's not too implausible for me um like yeah. i said the process of viper mode is relatively easy you have to arrive at the free state of uh, you know by finding up a combo anyway former ww heavyweight champion and five time hit movie star big joe real name joy balboa as an nba player of a match to the list of his accomplishment for the year which includes the, the wimbledon grand slam a baseball triple crown and the pulitzer prize oh, jesus Wimbledon's christ this crown. guy was just like the centurion man Bunchy so oh. much TV. But at the war ceremony, when he went to shake hands, he slipped, hit his head, and went home brain damaged, burned out, and thinking he's Elvis. Oh. <laughs> so, he, so, so, so there you go. Big Joe's legit insane. The Eldridge was equipped with the history first ever inexhaustible pseudo perpetual engine. It was not just a highly efficient reactor. Generator, but he's also made possible production defense fields with his unique AO, absolute object space, and the actual actuation of hyper light speed SV, subject variable, navigation, etc. Again, we with a design based on the Heisenberg propositions as matrix, which is a solution to the uncertainty principle reciprocal relationship of particles or cosmic rays wave it was thus also known as the s matrix engine or heisenberg engine in principle assuming all phenomena of the immediate future including the present are potential phenomena it actualizes the most convenient phenomena among these active subjects as the actual phenomenon and accordingly takes advantage of the resulting energy potential displacements again it sounds like techno babbles and partially it still is but it makes more sense than anything but now let's learn what happened to the zebu era ultimately Died. Ace Combat? I love that. What's this movie? Top Gun. Oh my god. Or a cult of a Zebulon culture that died out 4,000 years ago. Oh, Maverick took a dark turn. And look who's there. Mia. Mia. Eh? Stop uh, it. Who is this woman? That is Faye Valentine from Cowboy Bebop. Yeah, it really does look like her. <laughs> Young, she appeared in Zebo Mera, but I don't know who her host body was. Faye Valentine. And she resided at the side of the Prime Minister, manipulating the war behind the scenes. And like Pedro got that, this is about to get even more topical. To resurrect Tails? Wish Square would do that. In the beginning, yes, but later it was different. Many people then couldn't have children. They were defective humans, so she did it over again. Time to wipe the slate clean. Basically. 
right before man was about to be killed out by war, a new being was born to foster their next generation. Remember the missiles in the mass driver facility? That was the most important thing to the Zebulon people. Nukes. Because of that, we now are descendants of a few strong people who survived. A sleeping economy, rising crime, urban blight. Oh my god. A nation of fanatics looking for their own living space. <laughs> It was 2020, wasn't it? So living in religious sect leaders and gathering around totalitarian rulers. These people were cut off from the next generation thanks to the genetic damage. Hmm. And would have died out if led to their own devices. Okay, maybe not the genetic damage. Part. So Ellie and I took the hopes of the people and created Emeralda. And yeah, remember guys, this was done in the end of the 90s. Yeah. Anyway, go on Pedro. Remember this I have person. a stupid son, you know. He used to fish for a living, but one day he said, oh, I saw a Mormon city on the seafloor. I feel like I told you this already. Since then, he hasn't gone out to sea. He has become a landlubber. Yeah, I totally said this to you already. Uh, I don't know what he's doing now. Hey, you have a rare stone there, too. Is it a mermaid's tear? They're tough to find. Like I'm getting a sense of deja vu. Mm, probably nothing. And you, girl, you have the most amazing eyes. Look like they're an ocean treasure or something. So let me borrow that stone for a bit. Long ago, I used to be a famous designer. See? It's ready. Who are you, Tetsu Nomura? <laughs> you can take this. Good luck. You just don't get taken in by any strange man now, love. A mermaid ring, an accessory that only Emeralda can equip. Remember that mermaid tier that you can get at the very beginning of a game from the drawing card? Yeah. That's for this. So. Again, at the very oh. end of the game, basically. <laughs> How good is the mermaid cute. ring? There you go, it boosts up your ether and ether defense capabilities. Fair enough. There is one last thing that we need to we we potentially need to see. Let's go back to Cheetan's house. Remember at the very beginning of the game that artifact that the Cheetan was showcasing? Oh my god, Pei the chicken and, lived! And he was recognizing the music. Let's check what's on the, the, the fine print side. Something is covered in small letters in the corner. Hmm, what was the dark hiding? Celebrating my daughter's birth, may all the dreams, courage, and love in the war be yours. Uh -huh. This was a gift that Kim was preparing for Emeralda when she was she would have been born. That is why Faye recognized the music. Mm. Again, that is pretty cute. Honestly, uh, I do wonder if they should have actually made the underground stuff part of like a required main stuff. Yeah, it, originally, like you said, originally it was supposed to be, but sadly it was left here. And it was supposed to be even bigger, showcasing more of the war of that to destroy Zebo in But speaking of which, first of all, the artwork of it is, you can see, it's concept art for Emeralda, also in a potentially an adult form. But, uh, but yeah, just like with Hideo Kojima, this game released on, at the very end of the 90s shockingly was kind of like on the right track to see what the direction civilization potentially would have been taken and again as much as uh sorry as tv tropes even potentially says uh, only time will tell if this game becomes completely 100 percent oddly prophetic or not you can only hope yeah. it's not really Basically. the case but God damn if it's cutting very close right now. Basically, sure. One of the primary characters in Metal Gear Solid is an Ukrainian immigrant who talks about how she, how she, how a war took everything from her. Yeah. Even in general, every, the entire speech also that Faye gives about you know the economy, the crime rate, and even the the gathering towards totalitarian rulers, all stuff that has happened in the last couple of years uh, when you really get down to it, it's again. It's kind of shocking to see this kind of foresight. It's kind of a thing that a lot of writers, not just Japanese, mind you, in general, writers had uh, this kind of foresight around the, between the 80s and 90s. Again, it's very potentially creepy when you get down to it. So this is going to be awkward when we see Ellie again. You know, Ellie looks at Emeralda. Oh, honey, you see, funny story, Ellie. Um... You'll get used to her, don't worry. Hi. On closer inspection from what her profile shows, no, the clothes did not grow with her in age. Right, I forgot about that. But to be fair, they're still, you know, being oh, covering at the very least. It's not as bad as when Pearl Faye channels Mia. <laughs> fair enough. Anyway, 
In the next part, uh, we'll complete the remaining side activities, which includes that Dune Man Island that the captain of the Thames was actually talking about in the previous part. So, see you for that. See ya. See ya. Yeah.